Hello everyone, this is Carrie with Everwood Creations, and today we are going to continue our beginner's guide to using Vectric VCar for use with our CNC. Today we will cover creating vectors using the drawing tools provided in the software. This is part one, where we will discuss creating closed shapes. The next video will cover open shapes and line drawing tools. I am using Vetric VCarve Pro version 9.5, but all of these features are available on the desktop version of the software as well. If you're using a newer version, there may be additional features. Let's get into it. While VCarve has a great tool to let you trace a picture, see our Trace Bitmap Tool video linked up top, sometimes you will want to create something from scratch, and that's where the drawing tools come in. All of your drawing tools are available over here in the Drawing tab. Which tool you use will depend on the type of line or shape you want to make. Let's begin with the Circle tool. To make a circle, you just click the Draw Circle tool and then put your cursor where you want the center of the circle to be. As you move your mouse around, you will see that it gives you the X and Y location to help you place it with precision. If you click once, you will draw the circle with the radius or diameter located in the box over here. In case you don't remember from geometry class, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge, while the diameter is the distance from one edge of the circle to the opposite edge. If you click and drag, you'll enter what they call dynamic mode. It gives you the radius as you move the cursor further away from the starting point. Just release the mouse button to place the circle. You can also type in a number during dynamic mode, then hit enter, and the circle will be created with that dimension. You can specify if the number is a radius or a diameter by using the R or D keys, respectively, in place of the enter key. Once the circle is created, you can still adjust these properties in the drawing panel. You can easily center the circle in your material by putting 0, 0 in the X and Y coordinate boxes here. You can work with the radius or diameter metric by entering a value here. If you wish to edit a different circle, just hold the Shift key to select the new vector. Then change the properties and hit Apply. You can edit any circle from this panel. All you have to do is select it first, then change the values in the boxes. This can be done at any point in the future as well. Just select your circle and hit the Draw Circle button, which will open up the Properties box. Make your adjustments and hit Apply. This can be done unless you make changes to the shape or nodes of the circle, which then changes your vector from being a circle to an object. If you do that, you'll have to use the Resize Object option from that point forward. Drawing circles can be used for many things where you need perfect circles like holes for dowels, magnets, and certain types of findings. For each of the drawing tools, you can hit the spacebar to enter back into the Properties panel of the last shape you drew, making it easy to draw another shape just like it. Sometimes you want something round, but not necessarily a perfect circle. So let's move on to the Dry Ellipse tool. First, you'll notice that the Properties box of the Dry Ellipse tool is very different from the Circle tool. It does, however, have the same dynamic options as the Circle, allowing you to click and draw to the desired shape, with numbers appearing as a guide for the height and width. You can also enter numbers as you drag but you need both the width and the height values separated by a comma. So for a 2 by 5 oval, you would click, drag, and type 2 comma 5 and hit enter. The width always comes first. Alternatively, you can type 2w5h to get a 2 by 5 oval as well. Now let's look at our options for drawing an ellipse in the Properties box. You can draw an ellipse, 
by entering the width and height in these boxes and hitting create. Or you can click once anywhere on the document to place the ellipse in a certain location. Once it is placed, you can use the properties box to adjust your ellipse. Select the ellipse you wish to change and adjust the values as necessary and hit apply. When changing the size, you can select the anchor point, which will adjust the size from that point. So if you anchor in the center and lower the width, the oval will shrink equally from both sides. If you anchor it to the right, it will shrink the left side and leave the right side in its current position. The same is true of height. If you anchor it from the top, it will add or subtract the height from the bottom, leaving the top in place. Entering a value in the XY coordinates will move your ellipse to that location. The anchor point can be used here as well. Anchoring in the center will move the center of the ellipse to that point, while anchoring to the top left will put the top left corner of the vector to that location. Note that for both circles and ellipses, there is an invisible bounding box around them that is used for location purposes. So the top left corner is actually the right angle where the two edges intersect, not the actual line of the ellipse. You can see the points of this box when you're outside of the drawing tool and select the vector. As with the circle, the ellipse can be edited at any time as long as the shape remains intact. Once nodes or lines are edited, it too becomes an object and can no longer be edited in the ellipse properties box. Moving on to the Draw Rectangle button. We see that the tools for rectangles work much like for the ellipse. We can enter in the width and height in dynamic mode in the same way, either separating by commas or by typing the W and H keys. If you are aiming for a perfect square, you can enter the dimensions as equal, or you can hold down the control key as you drag, and it will keep your sides equal as you draw. Also, dynamic drawing will always draw the rectangle from the upper left corner unless you hold down the Alt key, which will draw the rectangle from the center point outward. And yes, you can even hold down both Control and Alt to draw a square from the center point. In the Properties box, you can select your anchor point to change the starting point of the shape. Like the last tool, if you select the upper left corner, the rectangle of specified dimensions will appear with the top left corner under the mouse pointer when you click once. If you select the center, the rectangle will appear with the center at the mouse pointer when clicked. Once again, you can manually move the X and Y coordinates of any of the rectangles by changing the values here and hitting apply. You can manually enter the width and height here. Remember that holding shift allows you to select any rectangle and then you can change values and hit apply. Rectangles have an additional feature here called corner type. As the name implies, this will change the type of corner the rectangle is created with. There are three options for your corners. The first is square, which will give you a typical 90 degree corner. The next option is called external radius, which rounds over the corner so it is no longer sharp. If you select this option, it will want you to input an inch value for the radius. This number tells the program how far into the square you want the curving to begin. You can see here that when I create a 4x4 four four square, with a radius of one inch, the curving of the corner begins at exactly one inch from the corner. If I lessen the number to say 0.5, the curving begins closer to the corner. While if I increase it to 1.5, the curving goes farther into the shape. 
An interesting note, if you choose a value of half your dimension, like for my 4x4 four four square, I say 2 inch radius, you will end up with a circle. The final corner option is the internal radius, which will create an indented corner like we commonly see on tickets and such. Once again, the radius value determines where the curving begins. It just curves in the opposite direction as the last option. Instead of rounding over the side, it cuts into the shape. While this allows a lot of customization of your rectangle, remember that if you can't quite get the exact curve you need, you can always adjust the exact curvature later by entering node editing mode. Now that you can make circles, ellipses, and rectangles, we'll move on to more complicated closed shapes with the Draw Polygon tool. One of the things you may notice from the shape options is that there is no triangle tool. That's because the program views triangles as three-sided polygons. So this is the tool you'll need if you want to draw one. You can see by selecting three as the number of sides option, you can get a nice little equilateral triangle with one click. To make other types of triangles, we'll use the polyline tool, which I'll cover in part two. The size you will use here is the radius, and that measures from the center point to the outside of the shape. Once again, the software uses that invisible bounding box to calculate this. If you are wanting your shape to be a particular height and width, you can draw the shape and then edit the size in the Set Selected Object Size tool for a perfect dimension. Now, the potential number of sides of your polygon are limitless. You see that three sides gives you a triangle, four gives you a square, five gives you a pentagon, and so on. Here is a nice polygon with 150 sides. It looks more like a circle, but the software knows all those sides are there. You can also move the center point of the shape to any XY coordinates by entering the values here. Finally, we come to the last of our closed shapes, the Draw Star tool. The first thing you want to do here is select the number of points you want on your star. The typical star shape has five points, so we'll start with one of those. There are two important measurements when creating a star. To understand these measurements, we must first imagine both a circle around the outside of the star and a small circle on the inside of the star, like I've made here. The outer radius measurement is the distance from the center point of the star to the edge of the outer circle and affects the overall size of the star. The inner radius percentage determines how deep the points of the star go toward the center. A value of 50 will mean that the inner circle is roughly half the size of the outer circle. If we change that to 25, we see that the inner circle becomes much smaller and the points of the star come much deeper in towards the center. If we change it to 75, the inner circle becomes much bigger and the points are not nearly as defined. Personally, for a typical star, I like the looks of about 40% better than the default 50 but it depends on your application what measurements will work best for you. These same measurements are used no matter how many points you have on your star. We can easily take a star shape and turn it into a sun shape by adjusting the number of points to something like 25. If you are looking for a more starburst shape, you can do something like 10 points with a higher inner radius percentage like 70. And remember that as with the triangles, if you're needing specific height and width, you can always go to the Set Selected Object Size tool, though once you do that, you cannot go back to the Draw Star tool to change the properties. So make sure you're happy with the number of points and their depth before you do that. 
So that is the basics of drawing closed shapes in Vectric VCarve. Again, please note that some of the controls may be different if you are using different versions of the software. I hope this can give you the confidence to play with these shape tools to enhance your carvings. In the next video, we will cover open shapes and line drawing tools. If you have any questions or helpful tips about using closed shape tools in VCarve, leave a comment down below and we can all learn together. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss the next one. And until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop.